that is not dead, which can eternal lie. And with strange eons, even death may die. Oh, <laughs> apologies. Sorry. I was just reciting uh, a scripture from one of my favorite books, the uh, Necronomicon. I'm, I'm sure my opponent, Corey, knows all about the Necronomicon. Does he not? Oh, that's some bad management style uh, from his manager, Alex. If he doesn't, we only happen to be the most dominant team in this league. But one day, one day you'll figure it out. But today is not about teams. Today is about you and it's about me. I am the maniac. I'm sure you've heard of me by now. And guess what? I've heard of you, Corey. I've seen what you can do. I have watched you from the shadows. I have listened to the words you say. I've listened to some of the answers you've given, or not given, should I say. And uh, I know where your weaknesses lie. And best believe, I am here to exploit your weaknesses. And by the end of this, I'm going to victory sub. And, and well, ah, forgive me. I'm sorry. Hey, babe, would you? Thanks. Appreciate it. I'm going to victory sip after this is all over. I'll make it nice and quick for you. <sighs> oh shit. Oh my gosh, Corey. It seems that we have some people just really, really up in our grill. And I don't understand why. I'm just gonna, you know what? I have nothing to worry about. All I need to do for this is I'm just gonna drink and chill. I have nothing to worry about. We're surrounded by a bunch of like man children that clearly don't know who what directors are. We're going up against like a team, like half of a good team, right? Is that right, Corey? I, I believe it's a well, actually, half of a good team. Well, actually, to give you some liberty, he it's half of a team, good team in <laughs> fandom. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. It sounds like a real bunch of losers. It has no potential. I don't even really want to like give them the time of day. There's no point. I'm probably just going to watch you win, get those points, and I'm going to drink to your victory, dude. I'm just going to drink ahead of time, actually, on that note. <laughs> well, you do that. But to break a little bit, actually, for Mark Ain and Kamari, I've, I've heard about him for a while in uh, all over the fan leagues. And honestly, I wouldn't be lying if I said – He's pretty, he's a threat. Like, I, I know, yes, somebody right here, oh, right here, right, that this is a, like, honestly, I wouldn't be lying if you, if I would be a little bit nervous, but at the same time, I think, I think I can take this, but, uh, listen, I want, the last time I was here, it didn't go well for me last time, and I want to prove that I can get past the hurdle that is one Dominic Rizzi, so I want to try again, and so, Mark, I respect you, but today, it's just been, today, you're going down, dude. And not to mention, we can't forget that you have like a pretty bomb record so far, and this is not going to break that. This is not going to be the match that makes you one and two. This is not going to make it. No, you are going to beat this. You're going to be already a two and one by the end of this match. It's a fact. It's the way it is. I know because I'm training you and I'm managing you and I only manage future fucking champions. That's what it's going to be. And who the fuck is this Jay Burns dude? Who the heck is this Mark? I don't care who you are. I don't care how many matches you've been a part of. I never heard of you. I don't fucking care about you. Therefore, let's just move on with this. We can just get it over and done with because I need to finish this beer. Okay. It's not worth the time of day. I also don't know what light claw is. But I still don't know what's in a white claw. But that's fine. J but Jay, I beat I beat you. Now I get your other half. So let's do this. <sighs> Victory is sweet. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of Multiplex Movie Warzone. I am your host, Brian the McCuffin Michaels. With me tonight, I have Kirk the Consigliere Cowl Cowl Close enough. <laughs> Why do people have such trouble pronouncing your names? Kowalkowski. You know him. You've seen him around. Great to have you. How are you feeling tonight, Kirk? I'm feeling good, and I'm uh, I'm actually excited about this match. Uh, Mark and uh, Corey, uh, two very, very different uh, personalities, temperaments, play styles. So I'm, I'm very eager to see how this matches up. Yeah, it's going to be a good match. I mean, both of them share their only loss to one Dominic Rizzi, 
who uh, I had my own problems with, but finally got over that hump with a resounding fashion. Um, <laughs> we won't talk about that. Um, but uh, these guys are both looking for, to get their next win, and um, we're going to see how this match goes. Uh, but first, let's get into our proper introductions. Introducing first, with a record of zero wins, one loss, uh, representing the team of Con of the Dead, he is Mark the Maniac Kamire. <laughs> oh, that's awful. That's really bad. <laughs> but otherwise, I'm good. I'm ready to play, boys. And we're sorry you had to drink that twice. All right. And introducing second, accompanied by his manager, Alex McFarland, it is Hollywood Corey Quinto. <laughs> Corey, how are you feeling tonight? Uh, pretty good. Uh, pretty good. I think that sign says it all. Why? That sign says it all how I feel the last time I was here. <laughs> all right, Alex, you got any last minute words of advice for your client? I'm just drinking a victory. It's... It's already done. Corey, he's been kicking ass. It's inevitable. Back to meet your maker, man. Sorry. <laughs> I right. have no control. I have no control over her, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll say goodbye to her for now and bring back Mark. And um, with that, we will get into round one of our match. Round one is uh, the usual round one. You get eight questions worth one point each. If you get them all right, you will get a ninth bonus question. Um, are there any questions before we start? Nope. Nope. You've both been here before. You know how this works. Okay. Ready. Um, let's get you started then with question number one. Uh, question number one is in the category of biopics. Who plays Jordan Belfort's father in The Wolf of Wall Street? Brian, who would play your father in a movie? Well, your wife would tell me Ron Howard. That's all I oh, know. She just yelled it from the other room. <laughs> I knew that. Was Wait, what, what happened? Five, four, that was three, a joke. And it, and two, never mind. one. Mark is down. Uh, let me start with Mark. Rob Reiner. And Corey. Rob Reiner. Both correct okay. for a point. Both right. on the board. Kurt, go ahead and take us to question okay. two. All right, question number two in my personal favorite category, movie release dates. What year saw the release of a film in the Scream? Scary Movie? And Mission Impossible franchises. I'm gonna give you a couple extra seconds here since you gotta think about three different franchises there. Brian, what's your favorite franchise that's also been released in the same year as two other franchises? <laughs> um everything? I, uh, Indiana Jones up to that fourth one was a strong one. Let's see good. five, four, three, two, one, markers down. All right, let's start with Corey. What do you got? I believe it is 2000. And Mark, what say you? 2003. It is 2000. Yeah, Mission Impossible 2, Scary Movie <laughs> 1, and Scream 3, I think. Sure, we'll go with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually have those written down. Uh, question three is in the category of prequels, sequels, and reboots. Who played John Connor in Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines? Brian, I haven't seen the new Terminator yet, and I know you have. Is John Connor in this one? You can yes. spoil it for me because I ain't going to see I it. I will just say yes, he is in it. That is all I will say. Five, four, three, two, one. Marker's down. I'll start with uh, Mark. The criminally underrated Nick Stahl. And Corey. Oh, thank God. Took me a second. Nick Stahl. Both correct for a point. Oh. Okay. For a minute. Question number four in the category of directors. What was the last Jedi director, Ryan Johnson's first feature film? The first feature film for the last Jedi director, Ryan Johnson. The last Jedi, a film that I know you love, Kirk. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, I have this uh, up just for you. Right here. Uh, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Five. Bad, bad memories. Four. It's a great three, movie. Shut up. Two. One, marker's down. I'm glad you lose the mark. Go ahead, Kirk. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Corey. Brick. And Mark. Keep it professional, Kirk. Brick. Both correct. Except for about Kirk being professional. All right. Your next question in the category of action adventure movies. 
You Only Live Twice sees James Bond traveling to what country to confront Blofeld? I don't even think I've seen this Bond movie, to be honest with you. All right, Brian, real quick, don't think about it, just answer favorite Bond. Uh, Pierce Brosnan. Acceptable. Yeah, I liked it. Five, four, three, two, one. Marker's down. I'll start with Mark. Bosnia. And Corey. Japan. It is Japan for one point. Corey's right. still perfect through. Uh, Not anymore now. In your next category, which comes in the realm of comedies, feel free. Ha! Huh? In Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, Bill and Ted are told they need to get uh, what grade in order to pass their history class? They need to get what grade in order to pass their history class? I've heard these Bill and Ted movies are pretty funny. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know. You know, anything They're involving there. wild stallions is good, right? Five, four, three, two, one. Markers down. And we'll start with Corey. Uh, they just need to get an A, right? And Mark. I think it's A+. Plus. It is A+. Plus. Thank you. It oh. So I successfully jinxed you. Uh, my apologies to Corey. Oh, I thought... Oh, it's I, fine. I thought it was just they needed to just get an A. No, they specified you need an A+. Plus. Okay. I'm not going to complain from the Bill and Ted expert. <laughs> oh, uh, in the category of sci-fi fantasy for your penultimate question, in how many Middle Earth films did Kate Blanchett appear? Corey the Hobbit movies, movie. Brian. Good, bad, worth watching. The Hobbit ones? Yeah. Uh, maybe if it was all one movie, certainly did not need to be three, and it's, it's just a bloated mess. No, Five, it did not. Four, three, two, one. Markers down. Mark. Four. And Corey. I think it's all of them, so six. She appears in all six, yes. Six, that's correct. Are we counting extended editions or regular theatrical? Just the, uh, I think just theatrical releases. Yeah, there were six theatrical releases. She was in six theatrical release movies. Wait, I want to challenge that because she is, not like two, she is not in two towers. Okay. Um, Wait, we, have, we have a challenge. We will uh, double check that and oh, be right I, back. I, I... Okay, we're back. Um, we did uh, research. The uh, We consulted some experts. Um, I think you know who that is if you are in this community. And we have confirmed that uh, Kate Blanchett is in the theatrical editions of all six of the Middle Earth films. So um, uh, Corey does get the point, Mark will not get the point, and Mark does not have a challenge now for the rest of this match. Um, as we continue on into question eight, Kirk. Okay, your post penultimate question in the category of 2010s. In Colossal, when Anne Hathaway's character stomps around a playground, it caused a monster to appear and wreak havoc in what other country? You a, you a fan of the kaiju, Brian? Uh, some. Others, not so much. Did you They're see this one? This is a pretty good movie. Four, three, two, one. Definitely a different take on it. Zero. Marker's down. All right. We will start with Corey. Having never seen it, I'm going to go back to an early answer, Japan, because I have no idea. And Mark. It's Japan. Actually, it is South Korea. Oh, South you're South right. Korea. Yes. You're right. Yeah. All right, which brings us to the end of round one, um, and I have the score with Corey with six points and Mark with four. Is that what you have, Kurt? Uh, six to four, yes. Okay, as we head into round two, round two is, of course, our wheel round. There will be eight categories in the wheel, plus spinners and opponent's choice. Uh, you spin the wheel. If you like what you get, you keep it. If you don't, you can spin again, but you will be stuck with your second spin. Uh, there will be five questions in each category worth two points each. If you'd like, you can go to multiple choice, which brings it down to one point, and stealing is available. Okay, so I'm going to bring in uh, Corey's manager. Um, Corey, um, since you have the lead, you can choose to spin first or defer. But first, let me tell you the categories for tonight that we have. Uh, let me bring this up. Uh, 
All right. Categories for tonight are um, the strength categories of Quentin Tarantino, Oscars, Stanley Kubrick, and Harry Potter, as well as workplace movies, 80s movies, uh, recent releases, and sports films. So, Corey, would you like to go first or defer? Okay. So, Alex, what do you think? I think you've been on a roll uh, running in first, so let's go ahead and play up front. So you want me to just go spin the wheel? Go ahead, spin it away. All right, then we'll go. All right. Come on, wheel, oh, be here's nice. Keep it on in case you want to spin again. Yeah. Just okay. Just, like, come on, right. wheel, be nice to it's me. It's gently like, like, charm the wheel. Charm. All right. Here's your first spin, Corey. Come on, wheel, be nice to me. Opponent's oh! choice. So the charm did not work. So, Mark. Do you need to hear the categories again? Uh, yes, one more time, please. All right. We have workplace movies, 80s movies, Quentin Tarantino, Oscars, recent releases, sports movies, Stanley Kubrick, or Harry Potter? Uh, let's give him sports. All right. You get right. sports movies. Okay. Okay. So stop the screen. All right. Kirk, do you want to go ahead and give him his questions in sports? Absolutely. Let me just find those movies on the list. Here, here we go. All right. Uh, in sports, uh, Corey, your first question. What sports film centers around the Rockford Peaches? A League of Their Own. That is correct. Question number two. In what film does Hugh Jackman play former boxer Charlie Kenton? Answer it, Peter. Multiple choice in five. Real steel. That is correct for two points. Question number three. In The Water Boy, what position does Adam Sandler's character play when he's put on the team? Yeah, I, I got to go multiple choice on this one. Okay, multiple choice. Uh, your options are A, linebacker, B, quarterback, C, wide receiver, or D, kicker? I'm Adam Sandler. What am I playing on a football team? Five. Is it a repeat if I ask for the options again? Three, not just the options, no. Give me the options one free repeat. Okay. Uh, I, can I hear the options one more time? Absolutely. Uh, is it A, linebacker, B, quarterback, C, wide receiver, or D, kicker? I'm going to say A. A is correct for one point. Hey! All right. What U.S. state is the titular team from in We Are Marshall? What state? Oh, hey, geography. Um, multiple choice. I'll, I'll know when I hear it. Is it A, Alabama? B, South Carolina, C, West Virginia, or D, Texas? I'm going to say I'm not 100% sure if this is right, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, Texas? That is incorrect. Mark for the one point steal. Let me hear those options again. A, Alabama, C, South Carolina, C, West Virginia, or D, Texas? South Carolina. That is also incorrect. The correct answer is West Virginia. West Virginia. Damn it. Yeah, it's between those two. And Corey, your final question in the category of sports. Miracle centers around the Winter Olympics from what year? Wow, that's not what I thought it was going to be. Uh, multiple choice. Is it A, 1976, B, 1980, C, 1984, or D, 1988? 
84. That is incorrect. Mark for the one point still. 76. That is also incorrect. Featuring future Pittsburgh Penguins coach Herb Brooks. It is the 1980. Oh. oh. No one no one cares about the Penguins, Kirk. Okay. <laughs> All right, so Corey pulling five points out of round two, but not giving away any steals. So we're going to go to Mark's turn now. Uh, we're going to bring the wheel back up. Okay. Now watch it right. get Spitter's choice. <laughs> that does seem to happen a lot. Whenever one person gets opponent, the other person gets Spitter. So. Yeah, that's going to happen. Now watch it. Watch it. It's going to hit you, Spitter's. You okay, Mark, here me. is your first spin. You got no one to blame but yourself if it happens. <laughs> oh, oh, almost did oh, it. So oh, so close. Oscar, would you like to take that or spin again? No, I'm spinning again. Okay. Now watch it happen again. Oh, we're going to get an extra spin because it is sports again. <laughs> yeah, give me those questions you just gave him. <laughs> Recent releases. All right. Oh, Recent releases will be your category. All right. Okay, so I will read those questions for you, Mark. Okay, question one. What actress stars as Anna in The Curse of La Llorona? Oh, yeah. Uh, multiple choice, please. Is it A, Nev Campbell, B, Lily Taylor, C, Shannon Elizabeth, or D, Linda Cardellini? Linda Cardellini. That is correct for one point. Question two, what 2019 family film features supporting performances from Ellie Kemper, Nick Kroll, and Bobby Moynihan? Hate to do it, multiple choice. Is it A, The Secret Life of Pets 2, D, How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, C, Dumbo, or D, Wonder Park? Uh, a. A is correct for one more point. Question three. In Book Smart, Jason Sudeikis' character has what position at the high school? I knew a question from this movie was going to be asked because I haven't seen it. Multiple choice. Is it A, a guidance counselor, B, a teacher, C, a principal, or D, a football coach? <laughs> he seems like he could be either one of those things. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, principal. That is correct for a point. Wow. Makuga. <laughs> Navigating his way through with multiple choice. Question four in recent releases. Who directed Midsommar or Midsummer or however you want to pronounce it? Midsommar uh, Ari Aster. That is correct for two points. And your final question in recent releases. In 2019's The Lion King, Zazu says his cousin and then his brother both thought they were what kind of bird? Could I get a Corey Hain question? Uh, but okay, I'll, I'll answer this. Uh, didn't they think they were uh, flamingos? That is incorrect. Uh, uh, Corey, would you like to try for the two-point steal? What bird do they thought they were? It's funny because I, that was literally going to be my answer. Uh, Four. Can I get a repeat of the question, please? A repeat of the question? Yes, that's your first repeat. In 2019's The Lion King, Zazu says his cousin and then his brother both thought they were what kind of bird? I remember this. I think I can remember the scene, but... This movie sucks. Five? Four? Yeah, why not? Two can. Incorrect, incorrect. He said they thought they were woodpeckers. Woodpeckers. Oh, sure. All right. So at the end of round two, both competitors picking up five points. So we now have a score of Corey with 11 to Mark's nine. Is that Jeff Kirk? 11 to nine, yep. Mark right. did a good job working his way through that category. And with that, we're going to head into round three. Round three being our pick your poison round. Our competitors will get six categories to choose from. They will choose which ones they want for their one, two, three, and four point questions. Um, the categories they have to choose from tonight will be horror, 1990s, action adventure, comic book movies, comedies, and sci-fi fantasy. 
We're going to give our competitors a chance to choose, and we'll be back right after this. All right, we're back, and our competitors have had a chance to choose what categories they want for round three. Um, Corey has chosen comedy for his one point, horror for two, action adventure for three, and comic book movies for four points. While well, Mark has chosen 90s for one point, science fiction fantasy for two, comic book movies for three, and actors and I'm sorry, action adventure for four. All right. Um, as Mark is trailing by uh, two points, he's going to go first. Uh, Kirk, why don't you take away with this first question? All right. You chose for your one point category the category of 90s. And your question is thus. Mara Wilson plays Robin Williams' youngest daughter in what 90s movie? Mrs. Doubtfire. That is correct for one point. Okay, still behind by one point, so we'll go on to your two point. Moving on to your two point question in the category of sci fi fantasy. In Pacific Rim, what is the process called where two Jaeger pilots mentally link? Answer or repeat. Five, four, three. Repeat the question. Your first repeat. <clears throat> In Pacific Rim, what is the process called where two Jaeger pilots mentally link? The drift. That is acceptable, yes. That is correct, yes. Called the drift or drifting, yes. Yes. So that brings you to 12. You're now in the lead. So we're going to move over to Corey. Corey, your one-point question in oh comedy. Boy. Oh, boy. In Caddyshack, who stars as golfer Ty Webb? Ty Webb. Answer so repeat, five. Michael O'Keefe. Incorrect. He was the caddy. The golfer was Chevy Chase. Chevy oh, Chase. well, it was a one-point. It didn't really matter uh, for the most part. Okay. Uh, your two-point question then will come in the category of horror movies. What was the title of the most recent film in the Underworld franchise? I don't think uh, this is, I don't think this is right. Blood Wars. That is correct for two oh. points. Oh. Okay, you retaking the lead, so we'll go back over to Mark. Okay, Mark, your three pointer in comic book movies. In Watchmen, Rorschach and Night Owl confront Ozymandias at his retreat on which continent? Antarctica. That is correct for three points. All right, going back and forth here. So, Corey, your three-point question in the category of action adventure. Somewhere. There it is. Over the rainbow. Gal Gadot's Giselle first appeared in which film in the Fast and Furious franchise? Do you just need a number or the subtitle? I will take either one. Okay. Uh, the fourth one. That is correct. Back to Mark. Okay, Mark, your four pointer. So we're at the situation now where Mark has to hit this. Oh. If he does, it goes back to Corey. If not, Corey wins. So, Corey, your four point in action. I'm sorry, Mark, your four point in action adventure. In G.I. Joe Retaliation, what is the name of the Cobra operative who is impersonating the president? Zoltar. And your winner, it's Hollywood, Zoltan. Corey Quinto. It's Zoltan, Zoltan isn't is it? the machine in the movie Big. Yeah. Zartan is the name of it. Zartan. So Whoa. close. Zartan. Oh, so oh. close. South side with Jesus. me, south side with oh, you. All over again. Close, close match. A oh. score of 15 to 16. I feel uh, bad. Can I? Can I, in the spirit of goodwill, give my win to him? Because I feel bad. I really do. You want to give your win to him? No, no, I'm just, no, is that against the rules? 
<laughs> no, 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 I'm fine. I'm fine. No, no, no. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Your manager's behind the scenes, like, flailing. There's, no, no. there's no precedent for that. <laughs> <laughs> if you really want to give him a win. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm just fuck Corey Doyman. I think you just lost your manager. Okay. Um, that was the whole point. Hey, I I caught her insane over uh, uh, over on the on the call of action page. So I can. <laughs> it's not normal. All right. Well, let's go ahead and go into our post match interviews. Kirk, if you want to go ahead and take those, let's start. Can with we our start? Workers. Wait, can we start with Mark actually? Because uh, just on a personal level. Ah, uh, that's fine with me. Okay, uh, starting post-match interviews. Uh, Mark, uh, eight-year-old Kirk, wanted to scream that answer out to you of Zartan. You came so close. And um, if you were maybe 10 years younger, I know you would have nailed that. Or 10 years older, I mean, you would have nailed that. Um, but you, you came close. You gave it a good uh, uh, good push. Just a few th- few things there and there. Did you in? How are you feeling overall in your performance? In my defense, I knew Arnold Vosloo played him. And I knew that he looks nothing like his uh, animated series counterpart. I knew that. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, Zartan Zoltar. I mean, look, that's I'm rough. like, I'm. It is rough, but I'm not gonna chalk that up to some sort of like rookie error. I'm gonna chalk that up to I don't watch those garbage movies, and I haven't watched the GI Joe series animated since I was uh, literally two. Because that's how old I am. But in all fairness, uh, look, it came down to it. I'm pretty sure Quinto's manager told him up and down that he was going to destroy me. That uh, you know he uh, that I was nothing and whatever. And he didn't destroy me. Yeah, he got the win. He had a better first round. That's really ultimately what it comes down to. He got the better first round uh, than I did. Um, I underestimated his ability in uh, sports movies, but actually, no, I didn't because good God almighty, could we please get some more, could we get some softer softball questions in the sports category? But you know what? That's a, that's a problem for the, uh, the question writers and the admins, and we'll discuss that later. I'm still mad about the Lord of the Rings question. If anything, I'm going to be mad about it's that question, and uh, I'll have a chat with uh, the powers that be later. Otherwise, I'm okay, except for Kirk. I am chalking this luck, uh, uh, this this uh, bad luck loss, to the disgustingness that is White Claw, because this was gross, and I was re-drinking it with my own spit in it, no less. Uh, it's disgusting, and Alex over there needs to choose her brand because she wasn't drinking White Claw, and I feel like that's a betrayal. So that's something she needs to work out. All right, looks like we're going to cancel that White Claw sponsorship. And, uh, Mark, I didn't ask you this. Um, this puts you in 0-2, a little bit of a hold to go to. You're obviously a talented player. I think you're a lot better than your record shows. Uh, where do you think you go from here? Where I go from here is uh, what we've been planning. And what we've been planning, me, my partner, Jay Burns, and Con of the Dead, we are going to take this as a team, and we are going to move on forward. We only have one loss to our name, and – Honestly, that loss, it was anybody's game. We're going to move forward, and we're going to keep going, and I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stay put. I'm going to have my revenge. The only thing Quinto did today by beating me is add his name to the list of people that I will be revenged, okay? I'm going to keep playing. You're going to keep seeing me. I'm going to be all throughout the spectrum of this league. I'm not worried. I'm not sad. Just tiny, little, little bit bitter, mostly at the White Claw. All right. <laughs> okay, 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 now uh, let's talk to our winner and his manager, uh, Corey. Uh, you pulled it in. Uh, Mark gave you a good rough, uh, good, good rough match there. Came down to the bitter end. Uh, just a little bit of a mispronunciation on his part, but not, take nothing away from your performance. Um, how you feel about this match, how you did, and um, you and Mark's uh, competition today. Well, I'm gonna, I'll start off. Uh, I actually thought it was a pretty good game for the most part. Listen, I have, like I said at the beginning, it was going to come down to me and him because honestly, Mark knows the stuff at the end of the day, but it really just comes down to with the categories. And also, I was a little surprised too with the uh, opponent's choice because I'm like, this is the first time, by the way, I've gotten either Spears or opponent's choice. So it actually worked out for the most part. I actually come from a, for the most part, 
sports, I'm actually, for the most part, very decent because I do come from a sports background. I have a sports background. My family mostly is in the sports background. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty good mostly with sports, but those were some really deep cut questions. And for, I was really, and for the new releases, I was chalking up on each and every one of those, hoping to get, to get each one. And, uh, I thought I had the two, I had woodpecker in my brain. It just, and I actually did enjoy, I actually do for, I'm one of the few people that do enjoy the remake for what it is because I do have a, uh, special place with the, with the original, but I just couldn't remember the part with the woodpecker. And then, it just came down to that final round, but uh, no, I thought it was a good game, and uh, a and uh, yeah, I thought we I thought we did a good job for the most part. All right, well, let me talk to your manager for a minute, Alex. Um, I think that match might have been a little closer than you thought it was going to be. Um, how are you feeling about your boys' performance? Well, let me just sing a little melody to my precious cat here. We just won. It was obvious we were gonna win right a fucking away. I had the best team in the round. Fuck you guys. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh, even he's getting annoyed by some of these other competitors. Obviously, we're going to fucking win. Okay, and you know what? You didn't drink the White Claw, right? Obviously, that's probably why you lost. You spit it up like a little bitch. No wonder you betrayed you. Anyway, but Corey, like, like was not to right out of the park. He got 16 fucking points. That's fantastic. He went right to the edge. Sure, I'll give a little bit of credit to, you know, Mark and whoever this J guy is, but... A cool dude. Cool dude. I'm, I'm sure he is. I don't fucking care about that guy. But... <laughs> but at the end of the day, Corey obviously won like a fucking champ. Because at the end of the day, he's also going to have a belt here pretty soon. All right, that does I'm put you at 2-1 now, Corey. Um, I'm not going to lie. Also, that, that match against Dom, nothing went my way, and it was a good way to get back on the to get back on the horse. Understood. Now, I know you're looking for Rizzy to get back. Anybody, Anything else you're focusing on uh, moving forward from here? I was promised. Uh, I always like to say I like to always uh, take uh, one game at a time, but I was promised by a little bit, I guess, certain somebody at the very beginning of next season, so – I want to know if that's still up in the. If that's still going to happen. All right, we'll have to check for the powers to be. But in the meantime, congratulations on uh, your uh, win. Well, wait, hold on. But before we go, I just wanted to say one last thing personally, and it's kind of a little just out of the out of the box area. I didn't run this fight with anybody, but I wanted somebody to hear this. Uh, I've been playing now for almost an entire year, and at the time of this recording, because I know that it's going to go up in a couple of days, depending on when you watch this. At the time of this recording, today's actually my parents' wedding anniversary. And they have been very, my parents have been very supportive, mostly for this whole voyage and also through my uh, going into the fan leagues and also competing a lot. So this is just my gift to, uh, this is my wedding anniversary gift to me and you, to, to my parents. So mom and dad, happy, happy wedding anniversary. I won. I love you both. Woo! Seriously though, Corey, I'm so excited for you. I'm so proud of you. And, you know, I can't wait to just keep training and, like, kind of help each other out through this process. So it's really been a treat. Thank you. All right. Good game, guys. All right. So that brings us to the end of this match. Um, like I said, it was, you don't really get much closer than that. Uh, 15 to 16. Uh, Corey was pretty dismissed with that one point, but that one point almost could have cost him the game. Mm -hmm. But instead, uh, he was able to pull it out. Um, any final thoughts on the match, Kurt? Yeah, um, Mark, I think, just has had a run of bad luck. Uh, opponent's tw choice now twice has uh, come back to bite him. Um, I think, you know, if, if he can just uh, focus on studying his uh, opponent's weaknesses a little, uh, you know, scout his opponents a little bit better, I think that's going to help him out. And um, like I said, just one or two, you know, little mistakes, little uh, brain farts here and there, and this is a completely different match. So um, great match for both competitors, and I'm looking forward to seeing them again in the future. Yeah, I see what you mean about opponent's choice. I mean, uh, Corey knows a thing or two about that. When he gave Dom a release date, he learned his lesson. Mm -hmm. Mark, I'm sure, will learn from learn from this in the future matches, but we'll be seeing plenty more of both these people. Um, but with that, we're going to take the end of this match. Uh, thanks, to everybody, for watching, and we'll see you next time.